So, without any further ado, Billy Bragg. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've been spending the last uh, couple of years uh, writing a book uh, coming out in June about a period in uh, British cultural history when our pop music went from being jazz-based to guitar-led. And that hinges on a moment in January 1956 when a guy named Lonnie Donegan had a hit with Rock Eye Online. And uh, he did a version, uh, he was playing acoustic guitar, there was a double bass on it and a washboard. It's a music that we refer to as skiffle. And skiffle, if you've never heard of it, it's basically uh, English schoolboys playing Lead Belly's repertoire. <laughs> and how did they find out Lead Belly's repertoire? Well, back in the 50s, you could go to the, British, the American Embassy in uh, Grosvenor Square and you could borrow albums from the uh, collection of the Library of Congress. They were available, uh, I should imagine, in your embassies all around the world. And the skiffle has worked out that uh, if they uh, borrowed the record and paid the five shilling fine for losing it, uh, they would have the record and uh, the embassy would simply order another one from Washington DC and that was the only way they could get. The record, Lonnie Dunnigan famously uh, stole the Woody, uh, the Muddy Waters uh, 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 plantation album. I'm not sure everyone's annoyance because they didn't reorder it and everybody hated him for it. But uh, he had a hit with this. Um, and the significance of, uh, of Donegan is huge. I, I would like to point out that uh, the version that uh, Johnny Cash sang on his first album wasn't Led Belly's version or the version of the Library of Congress. He borrowed Lonnie Donegan's version because Donegan mentions a, uh, a toll booth in the song. Uh, and never was a toll booth on American Railroad. He can make that bit up. Likewise, Led Belly's version, there never was a, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the original version didn't have that whole monologue on the front of it. It was recorded in, uh, in 1934 at Cummins Prison in Arkansas by John Lomax, assisted by Led Belly. He called up, um, they, were, they were traveling around recording songs, uh, prison work songs for the Library of Congress, and uh, uh, a group of eight inmates came before their microphone, led by a guy named Kelly Pace. And they sang Rock Island Lion as, as a call and response song. It was originally written um, by some Rock Island staff members working in the Biddle Engineering Shops in Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, it appeared in the Little Rock uh, Workers Magazine. They used to, the, the, the railroad encouraged glee clubs to go around to local events and to churches and to sing about the, ra the railroad. In fact, the song Wabash Cannonball was originally a song called The Great Rock Island Route which was a, a Rock Island company song that used that, first utilized that tune. So uh, I'm gonna try and sing that for you now, obviously not as a call and response, but uh, I'm gonna stick with the original uh, version which has a, a, a reference to the Rock Island line stretch between Memphis, Tennessee and uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> Thank you. 
Rock I 